man with any of us. Was it going anywhere? She jumped in the water and started pushing it. <laughs> I want to make it happen. I see everybody say and talking about sea steading for 10 years already, but nothing happened. It's going to be just his story. Okay. Talking, talking, but nothing happened. But I know I just want to get sea steading happen for real. That's why I need the sea steading happen. And I want to make it happen here in Thailand. Correct? Yes, correct. Thank you. It's very difficult to raise your children the way that you want to raise your children. In a seasteading government and you vote with your house, the government would always be limited. And if a government ever got too big, you could take your house and, and you could leave. So from a, a parenting and a family standpoint, seasteading to me is the freedom to raise your children the way you want to. I'm, I'm very interested in evolutionary psychology and how the brain works. And in general, any um, activity or human action, I think, which taps into our more primitive tribal instincts, more primitive group instincts, you know, like politics, for instance, too, generally speaking, the worse and often the more inhumane the results you'll get. Whereas, if you can make decisions based upon data and experiments and actually seeing how things work in the real world by running a test, yeah, um, you often now get a much more successful civilization, um, but a much more humane one, too. Uh, and so I like the fact that ultimately, Seasteading offers a way to replace, let's say, the highly backwards and the highly inhumane process of politics with data and tests and experiments with our most more rational part of our mind. So uh, I'm very excited to see where I could take us as a species in the century ahead. I heard about Seasteading when I was studying economics and I was listening to Econ talk. And at the time, I was just trying to understand how economics worked and the way Patry described it, uh, he, he described economics as kind of how, how a business operates in a sense. And when he started talking about governance in terms of innovation, that's what really sold me. And that, that was actually the basis of my understanding of economics. We'll make it happen. Um, these guys actually get things done. I have nothing but respect for Goman and his son. There's just two of them. They're just like, let's do it. The, uh, the boat got the propeller caught in one of these lines mm. that thing got destroyed so they pulled out some little barge with a tiny Honda engine and they're like alright we'll just pull out with this and she's on top I went out to try to help but I was no help I was just getting in the way so yeah, he's yes. like get out of here yeah. say, honey please go back <laughs> <laughs> like he tried to help I know he tried to help but you know, he's not happy. <laughs> I really like the idea of a uh, vote with your home, um, you know, competing governance. I saw that, you know, at the time I was supporting Ron Paul's campaign, and my whole thought was if only a libertarian got up there in the debates, then, you know, the whole country would just be like, oh, okay, liberty is great, and we're going to vote for that guy. Come to find out, uh, most people don't actually like liberty, so. I figured, you know, do the Ayn Rand, Gulch Gulch thing and just find some other place where freedom-loving people can all gather together and actually be uh, free together. Go back! Go back! Push it! Can you go back? Go back! Nadia is more of a man than any of us when the spar wasn't going anywhere. She jumped in the water and started pushing it. <laughs> Here we are out on the sailboat. Here we have a typical Thai fishing boat pulling the spar. The spar is on the way. Okay, I am currently in International Waters, the location of my future home. International Waters where there are no, no laws other than the law of the sea. Alright, time to 
drop anchor. It looks really sexual. Hey, you are on the, on the ropes. Come, come closer. To all those out there who want to control people's lives through force, here's my big finger to you. You know where you can stick this. platform way back there following us and uh, another boat is pulling it so we can put it up on the top of the spar. The only problem is we don't see any spar. There's just nothing out there. Vast emptiness. big cylinder in the middle of the ocean is kind of hard to miss. Uh, it's not good. The things that could have happened are uh, somebody opened the valve, which would let the water in. I mean, everything was fine when we left, but if some idiot came by and wanted to screw with things, they just opened the valve and the whole thing was sinking. There you can barely see something that looks spar-like. And there it is. We have the spar. All right, so here you can see part of the operation as we're gonna be pulling far through this hole. We're good to go. Oh, so, I see the sun is, we've got about 30 minutes of sun. Oh shit. Uh, yeah, just somebody just slip. This day has not gone well. I think I chipped a tooth. I was up on top of the spar with a hammer right in front of my face and a big wave hit. Hammer hit me in the face. All right, it's almost go to time, both times. Now we're getting our scuba gear ready. Uh, table top is off. Wires set. Hey, you got something to do. You are the most. You are waiting for you. Okay. Well, uh, we're ready. I just need. Uh, I just need a cap. Oh, what? Yeah, your cap is right there. We got everything ready to dive. Okay, we're all set. Jack, be careful, honey. Jack. Oh, this guy. Watch him. For somebody who not listen to me. I see you, you always see what happened to me. What up? Wow. There's a big one and that one is poison. I can't believe it. This what will always happen when you not listen to me, Charlie. So the cable is broke. Oh, be careful! Shit! Shit! What are you doing? 
enough power. I can't push it down. Okay, so that's my water. Chad, what do you do? Okay. Then you have to pull it. It was like five minutes underneath it. Okay, pull water. Pull, 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 pull water here. We filled the barrels with the air. Huh? We filled the air with the Why? Because it was sinking. Holy oh, shit, look. That rock. Okay. I wrote it. What's that? What is that? It's rock. It's already, already too up, but I don't know what happened. I don't know what happened. Everything, all the plans changed. Ah, ah these guys don't know how to drive a dinghy. Ah. Ah. So, how stupid can you guys be? It's, yeah, it's kind of uh, insane. Uh, well, the sun has set. And as you can see, the platform is still in the water and we're gonna be spending the night. is crazy. It's the worst day that we ever have in here. So, kinda shaking, shaking, shaking. But this is on the table that we are sitting and eat. We need a new space, a place for political experimentation. The next frontier is the ocean. With a little technical innovation to make this frontier accessible, we can unleash enormous political innovation. Let's let a thousand nations bloom on the high seas and build a startup sector for government. Seasteading is a totally different approach to political activism. My grandfather, Milton Friedman, was a proponent of better ways of living together, and I think we need to actually put them into practice. The idea for seasteading is to be a laboratory for people to experiment with solutions to the problems that aren't being solved by countries today. If you look at the global financial crisis, for example, part of the reason it did so much harm is that most of the world used very similar banking systems, very similar lending systems. A system without a lot of diversity is fragile because when something happens that breaks the system, it happens everywhere. What we want to do is provide a way for the people who have solutions to go test them out in practice. You need a blank place like the founders of America had back in the 18th century. And that's why we're building the community and discovering the technology that will let us settle the ocean. To cease that is to go out into the empty ocean where people don't live and to make a home there. At the beginning, we think it'll be people living on converted ships. And then over time, they'll build villages based on oil platforms. And then what we're most excited about is the big cities that can happen in decades. These new cities will embody new forms of government, economics, and law. And countries on land, desperate to keep up, will copy the best governmental innovations and will finally get political systems that evolve, like the rest of our technologies. Our insight is at a deeper level. It's that in order to find new societies, new forms of organization and legal systems that serve people better, we need to try new ones. And we want to try lots of new ones, lots of new ones that are very different. That's the way that knowledge advances and that humanity advances, when any group of people can go try out their new ideas and we can copy the ones that work, switch out of the ones that don't work, and get progress.